Chapter One of The Complete Bachelor. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Wales. The Complete Bachelor by Oliver Onions. Episode One Sugar and Lemon. Perhaps Rollo said my sister, Caroline Butterfield Spinster, you would like to go on to your club and call for me in an hour or so there will only be women i expect carrie i replied your consideration does you credit but no company that you may enter is too bad for me i insist on accompanying you it is my first duty as a brother carrie laughed i believe you like it rawl she said molly chatterton says loring says you never go to a club if you can have tea with a married woman it is the one reward of a blameless reputation i replied but that loring chatterton should say so is rank ingratitude considering his own ante-nuptial record rank ingratitude we dismounted together at millicent dixon's door and were admitted to the hall carrie gave my necktie an attentive little tug slapped my cheek carrie is justly proud of her middle-aged brother and likes to show him off to advantage and preceded me into Millie Dixon's drawing-room. Some half-dozen ladies were engaged in the usual five o'clock flirtation with tea and cake, and contributing to the feminine hum which didn't subside in the least as we entered. "'He would come, Millie,' said Caroline, after a crossover kiss on both cheeks, "'but you can lean him up in a corner and give him some tea to keep him quiet. "'This from my own flesh and blood.' Millie Dixon gave me a laughing nod over her shoulder, and busied herself preparing the cup that should have the effect Carrie suggested. I sat down and composed myself to listen to the restful chatter that was supposed not to interest me. Mrs. Loring Chatterton, at my side, was rippling gently on the subject of a School of Art needlework exhibition, while Carrie and Mrs. Carmichael talked Marshall and Snedgrove to Cicely Vickers and Mrs. Julian Joyce i have no disdain for ladies babble it is quite as entertaining as starting price and stock exchange gossip and much prettier but i couldn't get chatterton's remark out of my mind cream or lemon mr butterfield called miss dixon from the other side of the room yes if you please i answered absently while miss dixon looked a deprecating query as to when i should be sensible i roused and turned to mrs loring chatterton where is loring to-day i asked oh i don't know she replied i told him i shouldn't want him this afternoon so he said he would count the dreary hours till joy returned i expect he went to count them at some club loring always was ardent i remarked looking meditatively into my cup i seem to remember that kind of thing from loring before long before you knew him mrs chatterton what do you mean mr butterfield nothing my dear mrs chatterton i replied nothing out of the way but you don't suppose that loring had the good fortune to happen on the perfect gem without what shall i say a uh, preliminary prospecting mrs chatterton and i are old friends she laughed do you think you can make me inquisitive mr butterfield i know all about that why i made loring tell me every it was my turn to laugh then there is nothing more to say i answered loring is my friend he has claims upon me he has doubtless given himself quite away and half his bachelor friends into the bargain i think i see him doing it isn't that a pretty gown carrie is wearing i chose it for her loring told me a good deal said mrs chatterton musingly the buttons are from her grandmother's wedding-gown and he was so clumsy and boyish she continued words were superfluous i smiled anyway mrs loring went on i don't think it fair men have half a dozen flirtations before they are married their wives know nothing about and women mrs chatterton i asked some women mr butterfield may not be scrupulous but the unfinished sentence was a resume of female virtue since the days of penelope what are you two interested in cried mrs carmichael from a remote sofa i had just caught her eye 
mrs loring placed her hand beseechingly on my sleeve but i hardened my heart oh we were recalling the time mrs kit i replied before your several husbands were enticed from the liberty of bachelor life we were commenting on the change in them you should be able to appreciate the difference mr butterfield returned mrs carmichael you are just where they left you years and years ago yes ma'am i replied i have not been able to bury my memory in the wedding service nor forget my past in a honeymoon i am still as unregenerate as say um, kit carmichael was before he met you you are a great deal worse returned mrs kit you refuse a very pretty compliment mrs carmichael i replied yes at kit's expense it was you who made kit as bad as he was he told me so the perfidy of these married friends rawl butterfield you have no use for them when they sacrifice you on their nuptial altars their eyes lost their singleness with their hearts and your reputation has gone for a kiss well you have your revenge on their wives if you care to use it the spark of righteous war was kindled within me i leaned forward and spoke my speech with icy distinctness so i am responsible for carmichael's past am i mrs kit listen to me there was not a more abandoned and desperately wicked trio in london than kit carmichael your meek brother miss dixon and loring mrs chatterton endeavoured to stop me with a hot teaspoon laid on my hand but i still testified and loring chatterton not content with steeping their own souls in infamy they must needs go afield and corrupt the spotless name of one oh carry carry what your poor brother has suffered and now to be told in his old uh, his middle age that he did it all mrs kit and cicely vickers had put their heads together and were endeavouring to put aside the damning testimony in mock admiration of the dramatic skills with which it was uttered cicely vickers had best be very careful i was to be leaned up in a corner and given tea was i doesn't mr butterfield look well with the light behind him said mrs vickers with a pretty gesture of her hand mrs vickers paints flowers and asks her friends what they would really like for wedding presents mr butterfield may have the light behind him mrs vickers i replied but he has no regrets for a misspent youth charlie vickers wasted his youth most shamefully mornings in the park with a young lady in a pink frock is that not so mrs loring i turned to her suddenly it was a green frock said mrs loring thoughtlessly then turned quite pink it was a pretty situation loring might have treasured that blush i was avenged millicent dixon came to the rescue carrie dear she said you are the only one who has any influence over that irrepressible man do gag him for a few minutes and passed over a plate of gaufrets which carrie brought to me i held the plate to mrs loring chatterton who a reminiscence of fun still in her eyes accepted the peace offering with a warning shake of her head mr butterfield she said you never were anything but mischievous and it's my opinion you never will be oh i wish i could get you off my hands there are plenty of nice girls look at milly there she whispered mrs loring i replied once upon a time there was a fox who was caught in a trap and had his tail cut off after that ah well i suppose you know your own mind but mr butterfield she leaned over and spoke quite low i believe you make out your young days and loring's to have been much worse than they were do you not now mrs loring had a little beauty spot on her conscience which she thought was a stain End of episode one